that paper, that study was part of our uh, uh, psycho-oncology program at AUB. Uh, I think the major, and, I, and all, the major, I'll, I'll tell you about my experience, because right? the support is, I mean, everyone talks about what kind of financial, social worker support, family therapy, caregiver support. But I think the major barrier to implementing that program was we faced a lot of resistance from, not resistance, just from oncologists. Um, so we started out that program just looking at well, first, there is one out of four cancer patients, adult patients will have psychiatric needs. OK, so we expected that 25 percent of our population would be would have some sort of uh, psychiatric care, whether that's taking psych medications, having a psych diagnosis or having been in contact with a psych provider. So we use these, I mean, just to capture everyone that might have had a psychiatric need. And it turns out we were only seeing 17 percent in our cancer care, which is a care center and so the gap was so we decided to we implemented an automatic screening mean these page meaning uh, meaning these patients come in everyone whether you're a cancer survivor whether you had cancer 10 years ago or now if you have some the word cancer in your record you get screened for depression and anxiety and um the screening was by a psychiatric nurse but then Oh, sorry, by a nurse, uh, by their oncology nurse, and we trained the nursing, and they started doing that. But you, we wouldn't get the referrals to psychiatry from the oncologists because a lot of oncologists would not have that conversation with the patient. While we know now that this is it, it is related, untreated depression is related to poor clinical outcomes in cancer. They have less adherence to chemotherapy. We don't know if pathophysiologically that might be worsening with increased cortisol level, the cancer response. I will not go into that because there's a lot of, I mean, it's, it's a controversial topic, but at the very least it's impacting either their quality of life or their adherence and compliance to treatment. And so, and it's affecting their family structure. It's affecting their caregiver experience. There's caregiver burnout. And so I think our major barrier was not, we expected it to be the stigma around mental health. I found that there is inherent stigma that is enacted, internalized in the primary care givers. And so in the primary care providers or the oncologists. And so we started doing these community STs, communication skills training for oncologists at our institution.